Welcome back to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast, everybody. My name's Ollie Whitfield, and again, um, you'll notice I'm not Sean Finder. We're, normally, when we're doing something together or we have a guest live with us, uh, Sean will do the intro, but it's my turn now, and I want to bring you back something really, really special. So, a few months ago, we did something called Growth Month, and I invited somebody who I know is top tier with LinkedIn. It's not necessarily that he's got the biggest brand or you know he gets a thousand likes or anything like that. It's more what he does as a business owner to reach out to people using LinkedIn is spectacular. If I could chef's kiss you, I would do that just to show you how good he is. So what I asked him is, hey, Tibo, why don't you tell us your everyday routine? I want to know what you do every day. How do you do it? What are the ins and outs behind the scenes things? And everybody knows, you know, add value and like and comment and build the relationship and be authentic, all these things. But he kind of gets behind that and tells us what he actually does. So I'm not going to sell this one to you anymore. Enjoy the episode. I'm Thibaut Suiri, and today I'm going to tell you a bit about my LinkedIn prospecting routine. So let me just go and start by sharing my slides so we are uh, on the same page. Um, so this is what we're going to be learning today. So three things. First, we're going to learn how I find relevant triggers to start a conversation with prospects, uh, how to build a simple six-step sequence to get a 38% plus, you know, up to 40% reply rate, and then how you can create a simple prospecting routine. So I'm going to use all that. I'm going to use the example I do every day um, and, you know, how I prospect on LinkedIn, what I include in my prospecting. So you're going to get a detailed idea of what I do and you can get inspired with that. So on the next slide, I'm going to tell you a bit more about me. So here's a shot of me when I was 22 in front of uh, an airplane. Um, that's when I was living in Canada. And at the time, I was a uh, co-founder of a company called Buddy Pilots, which was a startup for uh, general aviation, managing airplanes and flight schools. And, you know, it was kind of like the, you know, the continuation of starting to work in this world when I was 15 years old. I started uh, cleaning airplanes at the local airfield in Switzerland to finance my pilot license which I got before my driving license. And uh, basically in this startup we, have, we were doing here, um, we raised over almost 1 million Canadian dollar and we didn't make a single dollar back. So it was a really good learning because I basically had no clue what I was doing at the time and I didn't know how to sell. And uh, fast forward to today, uh, I've had like uh, over 10 years of experience in B2B sales. I worked for a company called Applause uh, which is a crowd testing company, grew the French market from zero to 2.5 million euro of annual recurring revenue and grew the team from zero to 10 people. But since three years, I've been running a company called Sales Labs. So I'm a solopreneur just working by myself for Sales Labs, where I train and coach Texas people to start conversations, mostly on LinkedIn and close bigger this faster. I have a podcast called the B2B Sales Podcast, a private community called Selling Advantage. And I'm also a partner for Proactive Selling, which is a methodology used by, uh, you know, sales methodology used by the top companies that are doing IPOs in California. So uh, that's what I'm doing and that's about me. You can actually add me on LinkedIn. Simple thing, you take your phone, you scan the QR code or just go and type my name on LinkedIn and you'll be able to uh, find me. I post every day. I talk a lot about sales and sales development. And uh, if you really want to learn, you know, and get some tactical advice, the content is free. It's there every day. So go ahead and follow me on LinkedIn. Good. So let's get started. How I find relevant triggers to start conversations with prospects. So in my prospecting routine on LinkedIn, I have a few places where I look for interesting content and I use what we call the Oasis effect. So the Oasis effect is a very simple effect where if you go and you're stuck in the desert, your goal will be to survive. And to survive, you need water and you need food. So if you go and look for water or look for food uh, by looking for animals, it's going to be pretty hard. But if you find one oasis, there's going to be water, bushes, and animals, and, and it's going to create an ecosystem where it's going to attract your prospects. And it's pretty much the same on LinkedIn where you have thought leaders, people who are really influential, um, and if your prospects and customers are hanging out on LinkedIn, they will most likely follow this kind of people, like their content, engage with it. And the beauty of it is that you can simply see who liked or commented on a specific post and use the post as a trigger to start a conversation. So that's really good because you're able to find a good excuse to go reach out to people, a trigger to make some good relevant outreach. And on top of this, this post is also a great place to identify the people who liked and then you're able to really have some very relevant, very precise outreach. And you can look for different places. 
First thing would be your LinkedIn profile. If you are often on LinkedIn and posting, people will visit your profile. And if you're posting regularly and have a good content strategy, then you'll be able to have people looking at your profile who fit with your ideal customer profile. But for most people who are listening to it, you're not doing it because you're busy either generating opportunities or closing deals and you're not a creator. So basically what you can do is look for other people who are doing the job for you. Colleagues can be a great example. For example, if you were working, uh, you know, at like a specific company, I don't know, you can think about, um, what kind of company can I don't really have an exa- example in there, but, um, what you, what you could be working on is if you have colleagues who are posting regularly, and uh, getting some good engagement, you could get get, de- get there, for example. Competitors could be a good example too. So uh, in the case of Vanilla Soft, you have Salesloft. So Salesloft, they have Charlotte Johnson, they have um, Tom Boston, for example, who are posting all the time. These people post for your customers, so you can go and hunt on their uh, field. So it's a very interesting uh, thing to do here, where you can use your competitors kind of cloud and audience and reach out to people. Thought leaders is also a great opinion or a great place. And your colleagues and competitors, if they post regularly, they will become thought leaders too. So a lot of organizations and people are heavily investing in building content. You know, they have strategies, uh, employee engagement strategy, where, say, where they post content. You can think of Gong, for example. Uh, you can think of, uh, you know, like Gong is a really good example of a company where all the employees are posting regularly. And um, as I said, this creates uh, this effect where you can go and hunt for prospects there. Um, here's an example. So I'll take my situation. For me, I will imagine that I will be working at Gong. I'm not, but that's just to, for the example. Udi, for example, is a CMO. And when the Udi posts, you know, it gets a lot of contact and engagement from VPs of sales, people in sales enablement or leaders. That's good. I'm selling sales training. So that's the type of people I want to reach out to. Competitors. I could take Richard, who's not really a competitor because he's selling like a coaching uh, software, not a coaching solution. We hear chief sales officer, head of sales. And then we have thought leaders. Justin Welch is also a good example. Now he's talking more to solopreneurs, but before he was talking about sales, he get a lot of people around sales. So if I follow these people, instead of looking for individual prospects, I look for their posts, I scan who liked, and then I can find really interesting prospects. And then I can use the post as a trigger. So that's really how it's done. So first you find thought leaders, colleagues and competitors who get significant likes. 100 plus is a good example. Visit their profile daily, look for people who are engaging with their content, and then add BTLs and ATLs to your CRM, connect with your influencers. So BTLs and ATL is a methodology we use in proactive selling, which means below the line buyers and above the line buyer, two types of decision makers. And you may want to talk with this type of type of people. Then second stage is how to build a simple six step sequence to get a 38% reply rate. So once you have your leads, you have a good idea of the people you want to reach out to, and you have a good idea of the triggers you're going to use to get in touch with them. You want to make sure you have a structured approach that you're going to be able to follow every single day. So for me, what I start by doing is very simple. I define the touch points. So how many steps do I want? In my case, I'm between four and six. Really depends on the strategy I'll use. But uh, in my case, you know, I'm mostly working with, uh, you know, VPs of sales. There are thousands, if not millions of them. So, uh, you know, I can talk to a lot of them in SaaS and tech. So here I do six touch points because I'm going to do more people than just, you know, doing more touch points. So I do my touch points. How many days in between each touch point if I don't get a reply? And what are the channel and the media I'm going to use? So here's my example. It's a sequence I've been using for now over a year. I start with a connection request on LinkedIn, which I call the soft connect. Then when people are accepting on LinkedIn, which is 70, around, you know, 65, 70% of people accept, then I'm going to drop them a video using a tool called Tolstoy on LinkedIn. Then on LinkedIn, again, I'm going to drop a voice note using the feature on LinkedIn for voice notes. Then I'm going to switch to email, drop a video in the email, switch back to LinkedIn with a text based and another text based on LinkedIn. And that's basically the skeleton of my structure of my sequence. That's what I start with. Once this is clear, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I know that I'm going to navigate each touch point until I get a reply or until the sequence is over. That's allowing me to just, just do my follow up without having to reinvent the wheel and then know when to stop. And now what I'm going to do is work on my templates and scripts because 
A big problem I see with SDRs or people who are prospecting is that they are reinventing the wheel for every touch point. They kind of go, imagine stuff. So instead of having clear touch points with uh, snippets or templates they can use, they just think about that every day. And the problem is then they don't send enough follow-ups, they don't have results, and then they give up. So here I use three triggers. If people viewed my profile, if people commented on the post of mine or someone else, or if they liked on this. And so profile views are very simple. First name, notice you recently visited my LinkedIn profile. Did you find what you were looking for? And then if people commented or liked, I say, hey, first name, thanks your, thank you for your comment on my last post of 2020. Are you planning on posting regularly on LinkedIn? That can be an example of how I start a conversation. Once I'm done, basically once I have this connection request nailed and I get a reply or someone, I, know, I don't get a reply, but I get like an acceptance on my connection request. What I'll do is I'll uh, follow up and, and do my, my steps there. So steps two, for example, is like, what are you, to, you doing to prevent your team from turning off prospects with pushy LinkedIn messages? A teaser, if you're into it, I'd love to share a quick video on how your team can start genuine conversations with prospects on LinkedIn. Just let me know and I'll send it on. So I'm not going to go into too much details on my uh, frameworks and scripts over there. There's one framework for you, which is very simple. It's trigger, question, teaser, call to action. So trigger is like, I'm getting in touch with you because of this. So that's my excuse, your like, your engagement, your post, or whatever reason I'm actually getting in touch. It's just to show you that, you know, I'm not getting in touch out of the blue. I'm just here because you did something, you liked something, you showed something and showed an interest uh, on, in something I could actually help with. Then I'm going to lead with a problem, a question-oriented problem. So I'm going to say, what are you doing to prevent? How are you making sure? How are you avoiding? So really pinpointing a problem that this prospect may typically have. Example for a VP of sales who just got hired to build an outbound sales team. Big problem is that they have existing account executives who are fed inbound leads. They're going to be really annoyed if you ask them to do outbound prospecting down the line. So that's a really big problem they're working with because they typically have to build an outbound team, get AEs to prospect, and there's a huge issue there. And then I'm going to tease a resource for that. So, for example, here I would be having a quick video or a small ebook or anything actually where I have, I don't know, like a few steps to get A's to prospect when they were used to actually not prospecting. So that's really what I'm going to tease. I'm going to say, if you want, I have this resource I can share with you. Just hit reply and I'll send it over. And that's really the core of the idea is that you are teasing these people. I'm calling that the Netflix effect. Uh, if you think about the latest series you've been binge watching, binge watching on Netflix, it's most likely because they finished the episode with a cliffhanger, meaning they are building attention with the situation. And then there's, you know, like you have, I don't know, if you think about Love is Blind, for example, I watched Love is Blind 2 recently. At the end of each episode, you don't really know who's going to end up with who, you know, if they really fight and if it's a big fight or whatever, and they cut the episode right before the uh, answer. So they force you to go and watch the other episode. That's the same thing you want to enable with your teaser when you're prospecting. You say, I'm reaching out to you for this reason. Do you have this problem? If you do, I have a quick resource for you, but I'm not going to send it to you until unless you reply. So then people reply a lot, and that's how you get a 30% reply rate. And then you have different types of touch points, LinkedIn voice note, email, more or less with the same structure. Um, and basically, I'm doing this until I get that here. Now let's talk about how to create a simple prospecting routine. So this is very interesting. If we summarize, we found some leads, found some good excuse to get in touch with them. We built a sequence, and now this will be totally useless if we don't execute every day. So what you need to do is to build a simple, repeatable prospecting routine. The idea here is very simple. If you go and you know, you're know you prospecting like crazy on Monday, crazy on Tuesday, then you have follow-ups on Wednesday, you're going to, you know, very quickly be overloaded with tasks and then you're going to stop and not do it every day, not do it consistently. The goal is to do a bit of it and chip at it every single day so you get like consistent results. Consistent input means consistent output. So first of all, you need to define your cruising attitude. Coming back to my um, airplane kind of career, we could say, or pilot career, one thing we had to do when we were planning uh, navigation was to just plan from going from point A to B. And when you fly with an airplane from point A to B, there's plenty of things you need to take care of. But one of them is making sure you're not flying into terrain or into an obstacle. So for that, you need to make sure you go at a certain altitude, which is above mountains, towns, you know, and buildings. 
that's your cruising altitude. It's exactly the same with prospecting, where you need to make sure that you know the le activity level you have, which is your cruising altitude in feet, is going to be higher than your quota, the mountain activity. So your mountain is your quota, the cruising altitude is uh, is like the activity level. So the way you do that is very simple. You find out how many prospects you need to add to your, se to your sequence daily to reach your target. And it helps you break down a big target into concrete smaller targets. So I'm going to show an example of how you do that. So it's a very simple cruising attitude calculator. So here you go. The cruising altitude calculator is uh, this simple kind of uh, Excel spreadsheet where you define how many opportunities you need to generate, let's say per quarter, and then you define your uh, conversion rate. So out of 100 prospects you contact, how many reply? So that's your reply rate. In my case, it's 40. Out of people who reply, how many book a call with you? It's 20. And out of the disco call you actually booked, how many turn into an opportunity? Here it's 70. So if I got 80 opportunities to generate, not to close, to generate uh, for the quarter, I need to contact 1,438 people per quarter, assuming I have zero pipeline. If I break this down by month, quickly, a week and day, I need, I know I need to add 23 new prospects every single day. That's my cruising altitude. If I add 23, 23 prospects every single day, knowing my equation here, I will be able to reach my target. So that's giving you an indication of how many prospects you need to add to your sequence every single day. And so here, that's the example. Uh, this cruising altitude calculator is really simple to use. And really the idea is just to understand what you need to do every day, every week, every month, every quarter to reach your targets. You can change targets by month, by week, by whatever you're evaluated on, but that's the idea. And then once you have this, you have an idea of your cruising altitude. You need to make sure that you are actually showing up and adding these 23 to uh, 25 prospects every single day. And so the idea is to incorporate daily prospecting tasks into your work and it helps make prospecting manageable and allows you to produce consistent results. The thing is prospecting, let's be honest, it's pretty boring. It's pretty repetitive. It's not a task we all love doing. I love the kind of three legate of booking a meeting, but you know what you have to do to do that? Call calling, call emailing. These are all activities that are, you know, very repetitive and for most cases, not super interesting. For me, it's very simple. It's just like going to the gym, uh, you know, eating good food and healthy food. It's something, uh, you know, if I could, I would just like go out every night and I would eat, like, uh, eat some really, you know, fat food every day, but I know it has a bad, bad impact on me. So for me, I go to the, I don't go to the gym, but I do some workout every day. I, I'm really careful of what I'm doing, like what I'm eating. And basically that's what produce consistent and great results. And so the idea is that with prospecting, the really secret sauce is time blocking. So you need to just make sure you audit your time to find when you are the most productive. So for me, it's very simple. Morning from eight to nine is the first, you know, I arrive at eight at the office and I know from eight to nine, I'm going to be super focused, super productive. And I know I'm going to be able to say, okay, I'm going to focus on these boring tasks and repetitive tasks, do them. And once I'm done, I'm done for the day altogether. So my calendar looks like that. I got my power hour from eight to nine every single day of the week. And every single day of the week, when I get started, I just go and I prospect and I make sure that I'm doing this and then the rest of the day is free, basically. And so the idea is you can use this concept of power hour, which is a time block for deep focus prospecting work. 30, 60 minutes, up to four times a day, if you're prospecting like, and that's just your, you know, your full-time job, no distraction, not even from your boss. That's really important here. You time block to make sure that no one books any time above your time block in the calendar. And just be clear and ask to your boss, you say, okay, I have these targets. I know I need to prospect. I need to be super focused. So I'm going to ask you to not invite me to meetings or whatever, or override my time block because I need it to reach my targets and, you know, reach the plan for the company. And so the execution is very simple. Turn off all distractions. Make sure your phone is actually off. Don't have Facebook notifications. Just like kill all that. Put it in, in kind of sleep mode to make sure you're not distracted. Prepare your tech, meaning that you need to have your computer ready. If you're doing video prospecting, have a good lighting. If you're using LinkedIn voice note, have your phone ready for LinkedIn voice notes. Start with follow-ups. So you start with all the follow-ups you need to add. Find the new prospects you need to have. So in our example, it's 23 new prospects and then engage with these new prospects. It's that simple. 
And so I'm going to give you an example of how I do it with a program called Notion. So Notion is a very simple program for doing pretty much whatever you want. But in my case, what I'm, good, I'm doing with Notion, I use it kind of as a CRM. So here with Notion, you know, I know I need to focus and follow up with these people. So tomorrow, for example, will be the 22nd. I do follow up every two business days. So I'm going to do all my follow-ups, follow with all these people. I know which steps are going, if they answered or not. Then I'm going to find five new prospects on LinkedIn based on the first stage I showed you. And then I'm going to engage with them. It's really that simple. And when you're done, you're done. You don't need to prospect anymore for the day and you start over the morning after. So here's a checklist that is very simple. So three steps, planning, sequence building, power hour execution. So you need to find your productive time, put the power in your calendar, find your cruising attitude, calculate that, then build your sequence structure, build your touch points, implement the sequence structure in your CRM or whatever thing you're using for prospecting. And then you find a place where you are productive, make sure there's no other distraction, do your follow-ups, find your prospects, engage with them. That's really the idea. And that's basically it for my prospecting routine. So if you summarize it, I find some leads. I have a good idea of where to find some leads every day, where I can find triggers and find leads related to that. I have my sequence ready with the messaging, touch points and ready. Then I know my cruising altitude. I have my routine every single morning. And thanks to that, I basically run a business that is very profitable. I do prospecting maybe 30 minutes a day and I book like two, three outbound meetings every week with that. So it's really that simple. So you can add me again on LinkedIn. And there's, you know, if you want to go further, there's just one simple thing you can do, which is the new outreach system, which is a really deep dive into what we've been talking about. So you're going to learn the exact system I use to get 38% prepare rate and 11% meeting rate with like the sequence, how to find your ICP, calculate your cruising altitude. There's even stuff about video prospecting. And if you're still using Excel or whatever, I even have like a tracker. You can use the Notion tracker you can use. Um, if you're working and you know you don't have a you basically don't have a tech tech stack, you can use that and you can you know play around with this. And there's a specific code here, which is growth month, 50 per 50 you're off uh on this specific product. And that's basically it for me for my prospecting routine and how I prospect on LinkedIn. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thibaut Suiris on LinkedIn. I'll be happy to answer your questions. All right, everybody, that's the end of this week's show. I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, there's a plenty of things in there that I want to take out and, and pass to our sales team and try out myself. So hopefully you found the same. And if you made it this far, please make sure you do a like, comment, maybe even a subscribe if you like the show. That really, really helps us out. I can't tell you enough about that. And you know, if you're not really big on YouTube, but you happen to find us, we're on all of the usual uh, Spotify's and Apple playlists, uh, podcasts, I should say. All of those places, we also live stream this on LinkedIn if you want to come follow us over there. So pick wherever you're most likely to find us and we'll be there every week. And with that, thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.